Hey guys, this is really informal, super informal. I didn't want to do a full podcast on this uh, just because I don't, number one, I don't have the, the energy right now. I've had a extremely long day and it is, it's nearing 1 a.m. Excuse me, 1 a.m. where I'm at in, on the East Coast. I'm actually, if you listen right now, you're noticing the quality is a little different. I'm actually using a different microphone that's just built into my MacBook. Uh, so I, I think it sounds okay. I know my normal mic is a much better quality, but I wanted to just give you guys some quick thoughts. So spoiler alert, if you haven't seen WrestleMania, stop now. You've been warned. Okay, I just want to give some quick thoughts, and then I'm going to dive real deep in it into it tomorrow. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin, number one, first and foremost... I got chills. I mean, flat out chills. Um, when he came out and he had his knee braces on and he just looked like stone cold. I got, you know, I got chills knowing that he has prepared for a match, right? Like, you know, he, he's got his match gear on on top of that. Yeah. He's wearing a shirt and people have been commenting about, Oh, he's wearing a shirt. Was he hiding? He's clearly not in shape. He didn't have a whole lot of time from what he was told when he was told that he was going to have a match to prepare to have a match. So he didn't want to take his shirt off and not have it be what he wanted it to be with his uh, physique. And I totally understand and respect that. So that's why he kept his shirt on, no doubt about it. And, it, you know, given an, if given enough time, if, if he has another match, which I actually believe he will, you can expect him to be uh, you know, shirtless for those of you that care about such things. But um, overall, look, Stone Cold Steve Austin, is he a step slower? Yeah. But is he 19 years, nearly 20 years older? Yes. But he still took bumps. I'm very impressed with the way Stone Cold Steve Austin took actual bumps on concrete. Yeah, I actually cringed when I saw that. I'm like, Steve, don't do it, man. Don't do it. And he took a bump. It also, I think, elevated Kevin Owens. He didn't just get squashed. Kevin Owens was somebody that took a beating, yes, lost the match, yes, as expected, but also came out bigger and better than before. Why? Number one, he's in the ring with Stone Cold Steve Austin in his first match in nearly 20 years. That's number one. Number two, he actually got some offense in on Stone Cold that wasn't just a low blow or a cheap shot. Uh, and he was in Stone Cold's first match back in nearly 20 years, as I said. So there is so much good that comes out of this for Kevin Owens, even in a loss. And uh, guys, there's gonna, I'm going to dive into this much deeper tomorrow. Um, so I, I just want to hear your thoughts too on on the WrestleMania main event here of Stone Cold Steve Austin drinking about 38 beers. I mean, my God, the amount of beer he went through. And yes, I know what people are going to say. He dumps most of it on his shirt. Okay, let's just take the premise that he dumps a quarter or half of it on his shirt, right? And it's just a lot of it's just the perception, the the, the visual of it. Well, that still would equate to about 10 beers with how much he actually drank versus how much was wasted and how many beers were thrown to him. It, it, I mean, he actually, I guarantee he's got a good buzz going right now. Let me just tell you that right now. Um, but those of you, just like myself, that are wondering, is he going to come back? Would he have another match? I have said this all along that I do believe he will have another match if, if he, over the next week, his body responds appropriately and he's in the right mental state to do it. Does that mean Brock Lesnar? Hopefully. To me, Brock Lesnar is, if he was going to come back, would be the one that he should face is Brock Lesnar. There's so much history there. And the match that never happened, and he was the one that preceded the walkout and the take your ball and go home and all that. If it's going to happen, Brock Lesnar would be the one followed very closely by Roman Reigns. So that's one thing, guys, uh, quickly. And the other thing is a couple of things, and I'll, then I'll uh, head out here. Again, I told you it's going to be very brief, is Cody Rhodes' return. Okay, very expected, yes. Over-delivered, yes. I think he did. The match he had with Seth was incredible. It was a wrestling clinic. It was it, it was just, just technically sound. It made sense. It was uh, at a pace you could digest. And the fans were all all for it. I think Cody Rhodes is a established main eventer off the bat. Now, the the downside of that is Seth Rollins loses yet another big WrestleMania match. Seth cannot get that big victory. It's it's a bit damaging to his career. So there is that. We'll dive more into that tomorrow. And the last thing I want to talk about is Bianca Belair and um, and Becky Lynch. They killed it. They killed it. You can make an argument that they and or Kevin Owens, or rather, uh, they and or Cody Rhodes and Seth were the match of the night. 
They also were amazing. I think they were even better than I expected. Props to both women. Uh, I bet you Bianca Belair's eye is swollen up. It was already swollen shut by the time she lost, or rather won the matchup. So um, we'll, we'll see what her face looks like, and hopefully there's no damage to her eye or, or orbital bone or anything like that. Um, so wishing her well there, but uh, an incredible matchup. Very well done for women, the women there. And, oh, one more thing about Ronda Rousey and Charlotte. Um, better than I expected. Outcome was much different than I expected. An outcome that I, I applaud. I think that the audience would also slightly agree. I think it was slightly pro-Charlotte a little bit more than it was Ronda Rousey. Although I think most, I think when you look at the, this matchup, it wasn't exactly a clear-cut heel and babyface as WWE tried to portray it because Ronda Rousey is inherently not a likable person. Um, and I think there's that, plus Charlotte Flair winning is something that I think a lot of fans are a little bit annoyed at because it's more of Charlotte with the championship. So there's there's good and bad for that, but I think that in general, fans were slightly happy that it was at least Charlotte who's here and respected um, and, and is a mainstay in WWE to retain the championship. So, uh, guys, I know this is super high level. It's not very in-depth and or um, well-spoken right now because I'm exhausted, as I said. But tomorrow I'll be doing a full review for night one and previewing night two. Really looking forward to that. And, Grace, if you're listening, uh, who preview did was on the preview prediction show with me last night, I convinced her that the Usos were going to drop the belts to Rick Boots and Shinsuke. My apologies, my deepest sympathies. Don't listen to me. I told you don't listen to me. All right? So if you didn't listen to that, you can listen to the preview show. But if you've already seen the WrestleMania, what do you listen to the preview preview show for, right? So, guys, uh, we're going to be going ad-free. Uh, ad, we have an ad-free sale going on if you're interested on our uh, podcast page on Apple Podcasts for 99 cents a month or a dollar on Patreon. It gets you into the Discord server that we chat all during the pay-per-view and or the uh, website, www.podcast.com, for all of your ad-free needs. So, guys, more videos to come for patrons as well. Um, more analysis. I, I just went live on TikTok. I'm going to be doing a Spaces tomorrow on Twitter. There's going to be just so much content, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, this is a very quick-hitting type of high-level review, under 10 minutes, but tomorrow is going to be an in-depth review. So, guys, take care. I'll talk to you soon.